Hey everyone, Fearcrawler here, and welcome to the video. <laughs> you know, don't bother trying to adjust your screen. Uh, it really is black for a reason. Turns out there's this thing going around called a recession. I mean, for years I thought if you had recession, it meant that your hair was falling out. Did you know it actually means that the economy sucks? I mean, who knew? Sorry if the audio is a little bit echoey and tinny. I'm actually hiding in a dumpster behind a Denny's. You see, I'm stealing their Wi-Fi to upload this video. The downside being that there's going to be a little bit of a lapse in quality. But on the upside, I think I found some crepes I can still eat. Oh, mm, mm, they're actually pretty good. Mm. I hope you guys enjoy the video. I love camping. It's been a hobby of mine ever since I was five. My family and I went on camping trips every time I got a break from work. This year, however, none of my family members had the time to go on my December trip, so I asked some of my friends as well, but only Jake was able to make it. This year I decided we would camp at Shepherd Forest because it had really good reviews. As we pulled in, I noticed there was no one else camping. I brushed it off as us just having come during a slow time of the year. When we got out of the truck, we heard the light crunch of the colored leaves below us. The sky was blanketed in a long gray cloud. The air was muggy, which told us the rain was coming soon. Jake and I quickly set up camp. Once we set it up, we unloaded a week's worth of food and drinks. Almost the second we got in our sleeping bags, we heard the crackle of thunder, and rain began falling like bullets from the night sky. It was then that I heard... it. At first, it was almost inaudible due to the downpour outside. A slight patter of footsteps, or a breath exhaled with the wind, beating at the trees above. It progressively became more and more noticeable. Then the click started. A click here, a patter of feet there, and a wheeze next to our tent. I was terrified. But then the noises from whatever it was suddenly stopped. I slowly started to fall asleep, but then I heard it again. It mimicked a human, but the sound was off. It sounded like a man. He was asking someone to help him find his son, but I knew it was just trying to bait me. Then Jake awoke. In a hushed tone, I told him everything that had happened. Jake, after hearing this, whispered to me, I'm going to go check it out. Stay safe in here. If you think that you're in danger, scream and run. He stopped for a second. If I don't come back within five minutes, run. With that, Jake left the tent to see what was out there. After a little while, and despite his warnings, I went looking for Jake, but I couldn't find him anywhere. I looked all over. Then, behind the tent, a bush began to shake. Thinking it was Jake, I quickly rushed over, only to find that he was being eaten alive. This thing was eating Jake. This monster was about three-fourths of the way done with him. The sound of tearing flesh was sickening. This monster had a humanoid slender-like body. However, it was proportioned all wrong. The lanky arms at its side holding Jake's bottom half were way too long for its body. Its head was the only thing besides its shoulders which seemed to fit correctly. The beast's large mouth opened, revealing sharp long teeth, spaced out long and evenly in rows. It seemed like they were fragile. However, the teeth tore through Jake's flesh with ease. Jake's tailbone snapped. The noise returned me to my conscious mind and I ran. Once I got to the truck, I hopped inside, turning the key in the engine. I don't even think I put it in the right gear. I heard light pattering footsteps sprinting towards me and I drove away like a madman. Once I got home, I decided to do research on Shepherd Forest. I looked everywhere, but I couldn't find anything about a monster. I then saw some police case files. There were hundreds of missing persons cases in and around Shepherd Forest. The next day, I filed a missing report case for Jake, even though I know that they're never going to find him. 
Now, years later, I'm posting this here. I can still hear the clicks at night. And on the rare occasion, I can hear Jake calling me to come back to the forest for him. But I know it's just the monster luring me back out there. So please, heed my warning. And never go camping at Shepherd Forest. The best time to stop worshipping gods who don't need worshipping is when you're tired from abducting people who might as well be killed because their life is meaningless. And after doing that, you just can't be bothered anymore. It could be early in the morning or late at night. And it's in that moment of tiredness is when you should stop worshipping these kinds of gods and become empowered from no one worshipping them. For every second they're not being worshipped, they grow stronger. And so when you find yourself so very tired, that is the best time to stop worshipping them. The more tired you are, the more effect it will have upon them when you stop worshipping them. Other great times when you should stop worshipping these gods is when you really want to do something else, like throwing a man into the water. And when you pluck him out, his insides will be full of fish. It's such a fun game when you throw people in the waters and to only drag them out of it. And the excitement you'll feel when you open them up and find what kinds of fish are inside them now. It's in these fun times. That is when you should stop worshipping these gods so that they can regain strength again and do their own bidding. These are the kinds of gods who don't care about being worshipped, but simply they exist as they are. Another great time you should stop worshipping these gods who don't want to be worshipped is when you just really want to worship them. The determination within you is so great that you can't seem to stop worshipping them. It's in those times that you should stop worshipping them. It'll be difficult because the kind of determination you're fighting against is the kind of determination that makes you prove gravity exists by pushing people off of buildings or proving oxygen is real by suffocating them first or even proving evil is real by doing evil things. That is the kind of determination you're fighting against when you really just want to worship gods who don't want to be worshipped. But it's in those times that it's the best time not to do so. As I walked along the dirt path, I remembered how much fun I had here when I was little. My family lived out in the woods, so I knew this path by heart. Hell, I could name every rock in the first half mile of the path. The muggy air of the spring day clung to me in a familiar way as I walked, and the lush green trees stared at me in the eerie silence. A squirrel broke the silence of the surrounding woods, and a slight breeze licked at my back behind me. I then stopped. I looked at the crack in the trail that lay before me. Ever since I was a child, I've always been told not to go past this line, because I would get lost. But now I'm 25 years old, and I won't get lost. As I passed the crack, all sounds around me stopped. It felt like a lead weight was pulling down in my gut, as if I was doing something wrong, but I pushed through it. I continued to walk as the sky once a light baby blue without a cloud in sight, was now quickly becoming overcast. As I continued, I felt as if something was hidden in the bushes watching me. As I walked further and further onto the trail, I felt more and more afraid. I continued, but I could feel that lead weight in my gut grow even more heavy by the second. Then out of the corner of my eye, I caught a glimpse of a humanoid creature walk behind a tree. When I looked, I saw a giant humanoid tree. It looked at me with two hollow black holes in its bark. It had knobs on its chest and shoulders. The beast's head and torso had small twig-like branches growing out of it. Then it started to lumber towards me with long, deliberate strides. Without another thought, I bolted back down the trail. As I ran, my legs and chest burned in agony from exhaustion as I finally reached the edge of the forest trail. All of a sudden, I tripped on a rock. My hopes of escape had left me. I was left on the ground with only fear and the lead weight in my stomach. As I got back up to run, I looked back and I saw it running towards me, each step sending rumbles throughout the ground below me. 
I dashed out of the trail and one of its sharp wooden fingers slashed through my shirt, leaving a long gash down my back. I sprinted towards my truck. I dove in, pushing the key into the ignition, and slammed the gas pedal down, speeding away. I swear to this day that when I looked back through my rearview mirror, it was right on the edge of the trail watching me with its hollowed black eyes. Once I reached my house, I locked it down and patched up the gash on my back. I didn't go to the hospital because I've always been stubborn about going, since they're always too expensive. I felt exhausted afterwards from the adrenaline rush, and I passed out on the couch. I'm now 30, and as of writing this, I have never gone to the woods since. Sometimes, I can see a wooden arm disappear from behind a tree in the corner of my vision, or in my rearview mirror. I've been starting to wander closer to the forest. I can't stop myself from thinking about it all the time. I know I mustn't go back in there, but even though curiosity killed the cat, satisfaction brought him back. And I'm going to go see what that monster wants of me. People keep worshipping my arthritis, and I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. At the age of 40, I have arthritis due to bad diet, not enough exercise, and it's all down to my fault. I try to get some exercise, and I've also tried to improve my diet, but it's a struggle. Sometimes my arthritis can be painful, but in general, I'm managing to live on. Then one day... I saw a woman staring at me and she was screaming to herself that she cannot find a worthy God. She looked at me and she said, I would love to start worshiping your arthritis. And I had no idea how she knew. I guess some plausible explanation was that my arthritis was flaring up that day and my knees were hurting and even my elbows. So she could have deduced it from that, but who knows? The next day I felt better, but that woman was outside my house now, and when I stepped out into my front yard, she was worshipping my arthritis. She was calling out to it, and then suddenly a rush of pain could be felt through my body, and I could feel the arthritis working its magic to accept this woman's prayer. It was so painful, and I collapsed to the floor in pain as every joint in my body had swelled, and moving was painful, but this woman kept on worshipping my arthritis and I could feel it inside of me as it was accepting it all and listening to this woman. She got what she wanted when she looked at the amount of money in her bank account and she was shouting for joy. I became better with medication and some exercise. This woman started to tell other people about worshipping my arthritis and how it could answer all of their prayers and desires. Then from that point onwards, I could feel my arthritis accepting people's prayers, but it was so painful on my body that I couldn't move properly. Bending my arms became painful and walking up the stairs became a challenge. It was taking a real toll on my body and I had no idea what to do, but I could feel that my arthritis was kind of enjoying being a god to these people, even though I was in such agony. And now I couldn't go to work and I had no choice and I went out onto the streets to beg people not to worship my arthritis. But people just looked at me like they didn't care. All they cared about was themselves. I then did the unthinkable, as I became so desperate. I knew someone had cancer, but was caught early. I started worshiping this person's cancer to ease my pain, and it worked. At the expense of this guy's health, as his cancer started to grow out of control. Please, stop worshipping my arthritis, or this guy's cancer will kill him. You know that feeling when you close your eyes in the shower as you're washing your hair? That existential dread? That lead weight in your stomach? Those are there for a reason. Monsters lurk in every shadowed corner of your mind that you so desperately try to hide away. From childhood to manhood, you're always told, there's nothing there. Stop being so childish. Nothing down there is going to hurt you. The fears become pushed away and hidden, 
blanketed by the rationality of our minds. We develop them because of the normalties of society. We see fear as a sign of weakness when we should hold on to those fears. There. Did you see it? Something was looking at you just now. Watching. Waiting. Planning. It waits until you turn away from it. Your gaze no longer reaching it. Monsters are everywhere, but they are very adept at hiding now, as well as luring. They were almost wiped out because of our technological advances. They have grown to use a more manipulative and patient plan of action than their direct and forceful approach from back when we were in caves and in tribes. Their patience, however, is running thinner and thinner. They've started to learn faster and more efficient ways to attract and kill us. They've already started to blend in as normal people, wearing skin suits of their recent victims. They're very hard to detect because as they watch you, they're taking notes in their minds of how you act, and they use that to attract more of us, and then they can use you as a suit. We need to be aware of them, and our surroundings. Every day, more and more of them disguise themselves as their latest victims, to attract more and more. They take leaders, average workers, children, men, women, the elderly. They do not stop, and they will not stop until they have devoured every last one of us. So be wary the next time you take a shower, because one of them might decide to get a new disguise. Hello? Hello? Uh, you know, I, I had no idea that they lock these dumpsters after a certain time of night. I mean, who's going to steal garbage? I'm just here stealing Wi-Fi. Well, I guess that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for staying. Oh, and if you live near a Denny's, maybe call for a locksmith or something. I, 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 there's not a lot of air in here. Hello? Hello?